Wouldn't it be great if you could control your Elgato prompter with a simple click of a button? One click turns it on, another click turns it off. We may not have a hardware switch on this guy, but we can fix this in software. I'm gonna show you how, so stick around. Hi everyone, Shane Armand Rowe here. We're gonna make our first stop at Nearsoft. The link is in the description below. USB D view is what we're looking for. This is a command line Swiss army knife of controlling USB devices. We're going to download the 64-bit version for our X64 Windows 11. If for some reason you still have a 32-bit system, you'll wanna use the other one. All right, we've downloaded the zip. This is a portable app. You do not have to install anything, but you do have to extract it. So we're gonna extract it. We'll delete that zip. We don't need that anymore. Clean up after ourselves. And there we go. This is it. This is all you need. And you really only need the executable. We're gonna copy those files into the Windows folder because Windows folder can be accessed anywhere. So if I were to copy these files into Windows, it doesn't matter where on the system I am, I can access this executable. Now I already had it, so I just overwrote mine. Now we need to run it once for you to find a couple of IDs, a vendor ID and a product ID. This tool will show you everything and more that you'll ever wanna know about USB. Uh, in fact, it'll even show you devices that aren't plugged in anymore. So it could be kind of messy. As you can see, mine's fairly messy. So if we go to Connected's uh, header here, you can sort, and this will show you everything that's turned on. Now, obviously, you'll need to have your Elgato turned on. And here we go. Display link USB device. You're going to find that and then look at the vendor ID and product ID, 17E9FF1A. And I'm pretty sure yours are going to be the same, but just in case they aren't, I wanted you to be able to go and find these on your own. So now that we have those, we're ready to go to a command line and try this thing out. I'm just gonna paste it. You can get this in the description down below. You'll probably wanna do this as an administrator if you're not an admin on your box already. So this is the whole command right here. And there's that vendor ID and prod ID that we were talking about earlier, 17E9 colon FF1A. Perfect. All right, so I ran it and boom, the prompter shut off. That's amazing. Now, of course, you probably already figured out how to get it to come back on. Just type enable by PID instead. There, it turned right back on. You can see my screen kind of shrinks a little bit when it detects a new uh, monitor or digital device. So there you go, that's that's it. So you can actually turn this on and off. Now, I'm using something called Directory Opus, world's greatest file manager, and I can actually program buttons right here on my main interface to uh, run those commands whenever I feel like it. So that's what you saw in the intro, and this is what you're seeing here. But not everybody has Directory Opus, so let's make batch files instead. So we're gonna right click and we're going to choose new text file. Batch files are text files that have numerous DOS commands in them that runs in sequence. So we're gonna rename this text file to enableprompter.bat, B-A-T. And then we're gonna edit it. And this will bring up notepad, depending on what your editor of choice is. We're gonna paste that command in. And since this is enable prompter, I guess I can't really have disable here, right? So I'll change this to enable and we'll save that guy off. And then we're gonna do a quick control C, control V to make a copy. And of course, you know what we're gonna do now? We're gonna make a disable version of this. So disable prompter dot bat. All right, and of course we have to change the command to disable inside the text file. And that's it. I mean, that's pretty much all there is to it. So now when you click that batch file, disable, boom, the prompter shuts off. Enable, watch the screen, Ooh, tweaks out a little bit and the prompter is on. That's all there's to it. Now you can drag those to your desktop, easy access, all sorts of possibilities. Listen, if you like what you saw here, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell. You guys know what to do. I'm Shane R. Monroe. Thanks so much for watching and take care.